In today's video, we're going to talk about how to treat and manage an Achilles tendinopathy or tendinitis. And make sure you keep watching until the very end of the video as I'll be taking you through six things that people do wrong when they try and manage their Achilles tendon pain. And we're going to start right now. If this is the first time we've met, then welcome to Genuine Physio. My name is Luke and I'm a senior musculoskeletal physiotherapist from the UK. If this is your first visit to the channel and you'd like to know more about Achilles tendinopathy and all other things pain and rehab related, then click that subscribe button, tap the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. So we're going to jump straight into treatment and management for an Achilles tendinopathy. Now there is one word that you are going to hear me mention most in the video today and that is load. You have to prioritize load management above all other things when it comes to the treatment and management for any tendon problem, but in particular Achilles tendinopathy. There are some other adjuncts that you can maybe use alongside load management in order to try and decrease your symptoms. We'll talk about those a little bit later, but they are unlikely to make any difference at all if your load is not being managed well. Weight gain would also constitute an increase in load to your Achilles tendon. And not only does it increase the mechanical stress going through that area of tissue, being overweight also increases the amount of inflammation that you have in your body, in your system. And inflammation is not good news for tendon health. So if you are overweight, that needs to be a consideration during your management or treatment program. So when we talk about tendons and load with regards to treatment and management, we really need to do two things. So the first thing is we need to manage the load better, whether it's weight loss, change in exercise or activity during the week. We're going to talk about that in a second. But the other thing we also need to try and do is increase the amount of load that that tendon can tolerate. And routinely we do this through a form of strengthening. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about different factors that we can have a think about, tweak or adapt in order to try and decrease the amount of load going through the tendon and improve our symptoms. Now, when it comes to load management and exercise, one thing that you can think about is frequency. So how many times are you loading that tendon during the week and can you decrease or change the frequency in some way? For example, if you are doing four 5K runs in a week, would it be possible to drop down to three or maybe even two just for a short period of time? If you are a runner or you enjoy jogging, then considering the amount of mileage you're doing in one session could be something to consider. Speed and stride length will also have an impact on the amount of load going through the tendon. So rather than stopping running, you could consider decreasing your speed for a period of time. You may want to try and decrease your stride length also, or consider increasing your step rate. And lastly, considering terrain and gradient as a way to decrease load through the tendon. You may have even realized that your tendon pain has come on as a result of doing more hill training or hill running, for example. You're likely to find it more comfortable running on a softer, flatter surface than you are on uneven terrain or lots of uphill runs. Now there is every chance that focusing on these things and managing the load really well is all you need. You might find by doing this stuff, your symptoms decrease to a level that you feel comfortable with building things back up gradually again. And if that is the case, then brilliant. However, if your symptoms do persist, then it is a good idea to incorporate a strengthening program for your Achilles tendon as well. So I'm going to talk you through what a good loading exercise program should look like when it comes to Achilles tendinopathy. But before we do, it's important that you understand there is a spectrum of severity when it comes to symptoms. And at one end of the spectrum, you may have somebody who's functioning very highly. You may be able to do a 30 kilometer run with a little bit of stiffness in your tendon for five minutes the next day. Whereas at the other end of the spectrum with a more chronic degenerative tendinopathy, it might be that you struggle to weight bear or walk for more than five minutes. 
And this is where you might find it beneficial to seek help from a healthcare professional, because it's important that when you're starting your loading program, you're starting off at the right level. You don't wanna be doing stuff that is too easy because that's not gonna stimulate any change and we're probably wasting time. And at the same time, you don't want to be overloading the tendon too quickly because obviously you're then likely to flare things up. So if we talk about the progressions through the ranges, the easiest type of exercise that you could do would be an isometric. So you would do an isometric exercise if your symptoms were very irritable and you were struggling to do an exercise through movement. Now an isometric muscle contraction refers to the fact that the muscle is under load, but the muscle is not moving. A very good example of this would be a handstand for your upper body strength. You then might move on to eccentrics and this is where the muscle is under load during the lengthening part of the muscle contraction so when completing heel raises you might go up on two feet bringing the unaffected leg off the floor and then lower slowly back down on the affected leg obviously doing it on single leg is much harder the eccentric part of the movement is the lowering back down to the floor Thereafter, you might want to include some concentric as well. So you may do a combination of eccentric and concentric. So the concentric part is the opposite of the eccentric part. That is contracting the muscle when it is shortening. So when you're going up on your heel raise. So you may do a single leg heel raise going up. That's the concentric part. And then we've obviously mentioned going down already. At this point, you should be feeling quite a bit better. And depending what you want to get back to, you may find that the eccentrics and concentrics are more than enough. But if you do want to get back to higher levels of activity like running or jogging or sport, you do need to be doing some higher level rehab to mimic and replicate those types of movement patterns. If you would like to get back to some higher level activity, then you need to incorporate some plyometric exercise into your program. Now, plyometrics refer to exercise where your feet are coming off the ground. And typically, they would mimic either the sport or running activity that you need to get back to. So we're thinking jumping activities, then moving on to bounding, and then maybe later on some hopping drills. Now, I'm going to go through all of the exercises that we've spoken about in this video in a separate rehabilitation video. So that will be up on the channel shortly. So subscribe to the channel down there so you don't miss it. So that is the most important stuff. So the load management and then the strengthening exercises. But there are a few other adjuncts that you can try alongside the number one priority if you have access and provision to them. So there is a little bit of evidence to support the use of manual therapy, so massage. But do bear in mind that when we are massaging your calf, we are putting around three to five kilos worth of pressure through that muscle. And when you're doing your heel raises, you have your body weight's worth of load going through your tendon. If you had access to a facility that could provide shockwave therapy to the tendon, that is something to consider. You may also find that offloading the tendon for a very short period of time with a orthotic could help as well. And there is some evidence to suggest that anti-inflammatories can help if you're allowed to take them. If you had done all of those things and you'd done the rehab for an adequate period of time and you weren't happy with the level of function that you had in your tendon, then it could be indicated that an injection is appropriate. Now, talking about injections, we are referring to PRP injections and high volume saline injections. Steroid injections are not indicated for tendinopathies. And the reason for this is there is evidence now to suggest that the steroid in the injection can actually make the tendon weaker over time. Now I did say at the beginning of the video, if you did stay tuned until the end, I would give you six common mistakes that people make when they're trying to manage their Achilles tendinopathy. Now the first one we have mentioned in the video already, and that is that the exercises do not have to be pain free. If you wait until the point that they are pain free, then there's a chance that you've wasted an awful lot of time waiting for your symptoms to decrease. So number one, exercises do not have to be pain free. Mistake two is that you don't do the exercise for a long enough period. Now, Achilles tendinopathies can be very stubborn. They can last 12 or 18 months. So coming to the conclusion that the exercise hasn't worked after a few weeks is not a good idea. 
Mistake number three is stopping or resting completely. Now we know that tendons like load and although it is an overload issue, if you stop completely rather than just making a few subtle load management changes, then it's gonna take you a lot longer to build back up when you recommence. So if your tendon can tolerate it, keep jogging, keep running, keep exercising, just lower the intensity. Mistake number four is only completing straight knee heel raises. Completing straight knee heel raises works on your gastroc strength, but completing bent knee heel raises works on your soleus strength. And your soleus is equally as important when it comes to hopping, jumping, and landing. So make sure you do your heel raises with a bent knee too. Mistake number five is getting to the stage when you've done your eccentrics and your concentrics and your pain has decreased and then going back to your high level activity. You have missed a big gulf of rehab that needs to be done in terms of the plyometrics before you go back to your higher level activities if you want to reduce your risk of injury. And the sixth mistake that people make if they have an Achilles tendinopathy is not loading themselves enough. We mentioned in the diagnosis video that your tendon has to tolerate up to eight times your body weight when you run or jog. So when you get to the stage that body weight becomes too easy when you're doing your heel raises, you need to add extra external load. Thanks for watching. I hope you found today's video useful. I would love to hear from you. So please do drop me a comment below the video and let me know which point from today's video you found most helpful. If you are new to the channel, then please do hit that subscribe button. It means you'll get notified every time I release a new video so you don't miss a thing. It also means more people are more likely to see the content that you found helpful. If you have found this video useful, then you may also like the video that I have put together on how to diagnose Achilles tendinopathy at home. And there is a whole playlist on the channel to help you manage your Achilles tendon pain better. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, I will see you again very soon.